Now then, listener, I want to let you know that my book, What a Flanker, is available now in paperback. It's had some great feedback. Rugby World said, what a flanker, what a book. The Telegraph described it as explosive. The Sun said, not for the faint of heart. If you haven't got a copy now, order yours in paperback. Or get it in ebook or audiobook read by me. Thanks for your support. Now on with the show. Hi everyone, I'm Jay Haskell and welcome to What a Flanker, the podcast series two. My guest today is the 2019 and 20 UK Master Coach of the Year, world-class coach and international speaker. He spends his time coaching men around the world to reclaim their power, take control, find clarity, direction and inner peace while lighting a fire under their arse to chase their dreams and lead their family. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Paul Moore. Woo, jeez, mate, what an introduction. You'd think I'd wrote that myself. I yeah. love it. And also you say ass. I always feel like I should say ass. Do yeah. you? Uh, my, my wife, um, she thinks she's like from Manchester because her family <laughs> from Manchester. She's a bit of a paid plastic northerner. So she <laughs> so she says like bath and ass. I yeah. say ass. I'm like, you couldn't get more middle class than me. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm basically, yeah, I'm mate, born at Windsor. Ass is proper middle class. Proper middle class. Yeah. Like I, um, and I was born in Windsor, so I'm basically, you know, royalty, essentially. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's where I, I mean, go. I'm the king of the North, so okay. yeah, I've heard this. We've actually, you know, we've got a few mutual friends in Phil Lurney, who's, who's doing this podcast, depending where it comes out in order, we would have we would have had him on. Um, you're obviously from South Shields yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, I've got my friend David Wilson. Turns out his kid is in your class. He's mad, yeah, he's a big dude. Mate. <laughs> he's a he, big man. He came out, his baby came out like almost fully grown I as do. it was anyway. <laughs> Like I was a bit came out three years old. But I think he would have. I think I don't know, and this is probably a bit intimate. I reckon he would have had to come out the sunroof because you know way that was coming. <laughs> Man, his missus is tiny. Yes, yeah, missus is tiny. I know. My wife, if we have kids, is sort of you know she says. Um, you know, she find you know, you know, doesn't want wants to have it naturally. I was like, babe, size of this camel, egg, <laughs> you're never that is never coming out of trap one. No, ever. no, be like, you got twins now. He says a Haskell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Haskell. yeah, exactly. When I'm having twins, I'm just having a Haskell. She, she walks like John Wayne as it is anyway. Um, <laughs> so listen, for those people who don't know you, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about who yeah, you are of exactly? Of course. So right now, you've just kind of said where I'm at right now, and that all. My speaking coach hates it when I say this, but it happened by accident. Like, I just stumbled into it. So back in 2014, I was living in Marbella, had a successful company, couple of successful companies, hot wife, two kids, um, four-bedroom villa with a private pool, had what, from the outside, looked incredible. Like, when I left school with two GCSEs, it was everything I thought I ever wanted. But when I got there, it felt nothing like I thought it would. Um, because along the way, I'd sacrificed everything. I mean, I put five stone on, I was drinking and sniffing coke all of the time. That's kind of my beer. So yeah. Kind of, I would describe it as I was there for two years. And it was like when you go on a one week bender when you're 18 with your mates and you come back crying. Yes. <laughs> like three, like when you go for Vegas for four days and you arrive at that Vegas airport and into LA to fly in a body bag. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. I've been asleep at that gate, like in hell. Like <laughs> yeah. I remember getting on the plane and like shaking and going, what will fix this? Green tea? Is if that was going to unwind <laughs> everything I'd done to myself. I was like, fuck, green tea, you're like this. <laughs> yeah. The woman reckons she'd never seen a man like fall asleep. So qu- I got on the plane, sat yeah. in, had this shaky green tea and just fell asleep. Like this. And when I woke yeah. up, I was tucked in. Yeah. I was, I, she tucked me in as a grown man. Dude, the last time we went to Vegas, my wife was pregnant and uh, I did three days and I didn't even text her the whole time I was there. Oh my God. I was eating pedigree chum the whole week when I got back. Mate, oh, I, I my wife, if that, if I had done that, that'd be game over. Yeah. Like, she'll, like, she's not, like, doesn't hound me, but it, if there's no Not excuse, even a text. Not even a text. Yeah. You can't do that. No, you no, can't. No. I'm telling you, you're the life coach, <laughs> but I'm telling you, that was a colossal <laughs> fuck up. I'll do that. In me excuse, in me, uh, in me defence, I think it was 2012 there. Fine. So, <laughs> I haven't, she, funny enough, she hasn't let me go back. Yeah, funny that. I'm not allowed to go back. I know. Well, I've no. been off at speaking gigs there and everything, and I'm like, oh, no, sorry, it's too far. Why don't you take her? <laughs> well, because I don't have to take me two fucking kids. Well, why don't you just make it a romantic weekend? That's your perfect crime. Listen, <laughs> oh, listen I think you've come into... You coach people, let me coach you. Let me explain how it works. <laughs> like, this is what you do. You say to, listen, I want, we, you know, you're know, always looking after the kids. You do a fantastic job. You support me on my journey. I want to take you away for that week yeah. to Vegas. Get Parents are still around to look after the kids. Babysitter, take it for yeah. the week. Spoiler, because Vegas, the beauty of Vegas is whatever you want it to be. So I've been there with partners. Cirque du Soleil, Cirque du Soir, you know, dinners, just a little bit of fun gambling, yeah, yeah, relax, yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah. Not even seen a club scene. Really? Mate, it's whatever Dude, you want it to seen, be. I remember we went there when I was about 21. 
and they had like these catalogues for like hookers. <laughs> yeah, I, in I the was along with my missus. Yeah, and they're like, here's a here's a catalogue full of women. Yeah, with my missus, I'm like, wow, welcome to Vegas, yeah. unbelievable. You get brass cat. It's like the yellow pages for brass, <laughs> and it's in your room. <laughs> And by the way, they're all worldies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, things, the thing with the game, if you're going to Vegas to, to brassing, you've gone wrong. There's all, it's like, it's all, mm. it's all, it would be like, it's like going to the beach and paying for extra sand when you just don't need it. You well, don't... mate, to be fair, have you ever been to South Shields? There's no brass. We don't even have a strip club. Yeah, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. I've been to some places, like I've been to some, uh, or, or, or no, I shouldn't say this because I'm not a big strip club man. I actually talked about it in my book, What a Flanker, that I was, I'm never that, a lot of lads like that vibe. Yeah. I don't need another woman pretending she she likes me. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm like, paying for it. I'm paying for it. Like, you know, if you're going to go, you might as well go full professional, go the full hog. Don't go there and just pay for the dance. Do you mean a massage? I, well, I would say, yeah, you, it's under the guise of massage. You, you, go, massage. Full, you go full turbo because what's yeah. the point? Because it's basically like uh, all the fluff and none of the fun. All yeah. the foreplay, none of the fun. So yeah. I've never done that. But I know lads have gone to some remote countries, found strip clubs, and as you would imagine, the pickings are very slim. Like one with one arm, one leg, half an eye. You know what I mean? And that's Make kind a of good like... motivational speaker, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it. So yeah, mate, I did two years of Vegas, basically, right. but in Marbella. And because uh, I could, really. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I'd never, no one in my family's an entrepreneur. I came from. Uh, I mean, I wasn't broke, but I came from a normal family. I read uh, saying that your dad was, a, you know, like a skilled engineer. My at dad factory. was a skilled engineer. Your mum was a stay home. Yeah. She worked in Asda. My mum. Yeah. She worked in Asda, so it was it was kind of this newfound success, and I had no idea how to deal with it other than party. So um, that led to just obviously you, you keep up a lifestyle like that for so long, it's going to catch up with you. Yeah. And it caught up with me in a bad way. Um, when I was in Marbella, they didn't know how to deal with me, so uh, they diagnosed me bipolar. I essentially got sent home because they, they didn't know how to deal with it. So we came home a few months later. I was uh, I was on the edge of a cliff in South Shields, ready to uh, ready to jump. So and that led me on this. I don't want to use the word self discovery, but I went on all these courses, studied, had mentors, coaches, had a, had a fight with a random man on a beach in California <clears throat> as part of a course. Um, <laughs> and, that, and then I slowly started to get my shit together. Lost a bunch of weight, got off the bipolar meds, got off the anxiety meds. And then loads of people started asking me how I did it. And then I released a video um, where I basically described my whole thing and it's had six million views now. And then I think what happened for us, James, was people, I did this video and I, I said things in ways that men aren't used to hearing. Yeah. Like, and loads of people are like, it's like you're talking directly to me because I think, I don't know, we'll talk about this, mental health, it's not... No one ever talks about the way it really needs to be spoken about. It's all molly coddling and it's all let's candles talk. and uh, incense and it fairy. Is, uh, yeah, it's just yeah, a bit. Soft touch. And I don't know if it's about man up. I mean, I, I did an article in the Guardian because I interviewed Tyson Fury for my podcast yeah. last year, and you're not going to tell him to man up, right? No, <laughs> you know what no. I mean? he's going to give you a stiff one. And um, I, I don't think it's about that. I think it's just there's nobody wants to tell people to take responsibility. Yeah, yeah. It's all like oh, talk about this and talk about that, but. Listen, you can talk all you want, but if you go back to your habits that got you there, let's yeah. face it, you don't get depressed by accident. You don't get you don't catch anxiety. It's not contagious. It's a result of it was a result of my actions, and nobody wants to address that. Yeah. Nobody wants to say take fucking charge, take responsibility for what you've created. You didn't. You didn't. I didn't get there by accident. Yeah. Yeah, I and, agree. And, and and for me, the talking isn't enough. You can talk until the cows come home, but like I say, if you, you you can talk to a therapist, you can talk to your mates, but if you then go out and get fucking wasted, sniff loads of gear, yeah. on a Monday morning you're anxious again, it's, nothing's changed. I mean, I, I would say, because um, I'm interested about the man up thing, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about that, because I have c certain views on, on stuff. I think it's interesting, so I um, always saw a... Um, we're going to dot around it, because yeah, you're a, a fascinating guy. and I, I saw a, a, a sports uh, psychologist early on, about uh, 17, 18, I always had real confidence issues around mm -hmm. myself, even though I was very much an extra but yeah i had that i d doubt myself in performance <laughs> so i haven't had mental health issues other than other than that and what i learned about therapy was is that therapist doesn't fix you you fix yourself yeah and the message of all this stuff is that ultimately you are the only person that can make a change yeah. and i firmly believe that we're completely yeah. in line with that yeah it's interesting with the man up thing though this is what i'll say is when you have two kids and someone flagged this up to me when you have two kids you've got a daughter and a, and a, a bloke right yeah. and the little girl falls over and she starts I do crying. actually have that oh. yeah so you got that so you <laughs> I love the way you said a bloke by the way you have a daughter and a bloke <laughs> yeah, boy, sorry you have, a, you have a boy and a girl a boy and a girl I've been spending around you're talking about David Wilson yeah, exactly, yeah 
fully grown adult, right? And you had a, you have a, a boy and a girl, and the girl falls over, the girl cries. You come to daddy, how are you? And you mm-hmm. let them be emotional. The boy falls over, you say, come on, we don't cry, men don't cry. Uh, and I know we inherently yeah. hammer that, and I am not, and I'm 100% on your page about, um, you know, sort of that idea of fixing yourself. Yeah. But I will say what's happened with things like man up and shit is mm-hmm. that is that it... it it stopped people actually having the conversation to find yeah. the thing to fix yeah. them. Yeah. Because the one thing I find with this stuff is that if people could fix themselves, they would do it automatically. But what they need is is the guidance or the yeah, other thing. Sh- I think everybody wants to live a more positive life. We're just yeah. not shown how to. Yes, that's what I mean. You know what I mean, yeah. like I'll say, I did a podcast a while ago, and I said, because I always get asked on a lot of these podcasts, what do you think the problem is with men? Why do you think men are so fucked? Yeah, and I think it's two reasons. I think one. They don't know how to manage their state. They don't yeah. know how to manage their physiology, what they're focused on, where their attention is. Even the language is shit. Yeah. And then the second thing is, I think we get to a certain point where we just lose a sense of purpose. Yeah. Like, I talk, I spoke to Fury about this, and you've maybe had this, where you finished your career, yeah. and you're like, is this it? Identity. I lost yeah. my identity. Yeah. Who am yeah. I? Was I a rugby player? Am I, am I a DJ now? Am I a public speaker on my podcast? Yeah. And what do I actually do? Yeah. Where do I get my elation from? Where do yeah. I get my affirmation from? Yeah. All those things disappear. Yeah. 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 Where do I get my significance from? Yes. And I think that happens. That happened to me. So I hit this point where I was like, fucking hell, I'm living this fucking four hour work week, bringing home big cheese. Is this it? It was kind of like the way I describe it is I climbed this massive ladder sacrificed everything along the way, my mental health, my physical health, my friends. I mean, I moved to Marbella, I didn't even fucking know anyone. Do you know what I mean? I didn't yeah. know anyone there. Why did you do that? Why I think I was just running away. Right. I got to this point in my life, James, where I hated everyone. Right, okay. I, did, oh, I was like, people are this, people are that. The problem was me. Right. So you know when people are like, oh, cut all the negative people out of your life. I'm not into that vibe. I'm like... I, I, People are negative. People like to complain, but we yeah. join in when they do. Yeah, and yeah, then we we'll blame them for the way that we feel. Yeah, but I think it's like, so I, I talk about like in my book, like um, people having a sappuccino, right? Yeah. Sitting around having a bitch, right? Yeah. I, I I like nothing more than sitting around having a bitch. But I think you're entitled to a bitch if you put the work in and you're prepared to do it. And yeah. it's like, but where people go is you have people who are consistently negative who yeah. will bring you down. Yes, you are negative in turn, but then you don't action your you don't act your negativity. Like yeah, I would sit around yeah, and go, yeah, yeah. fucking hell, coach is shit, training is shit. Do you yeah. see we you know the uh, the the Because it makes runner. us feel better, right? It makes us feel better yeah. and we feel a kindred spirit, but then you've got to get up and get into it. And yes. that's where the mental toughness yeah, comes in. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that I think I'm almost like listen, m- my mum should probably be fucking listening. Sorry, I said my mum because you're here. Yeah. It's me mum. Me mum. Yeah. Me mum. <laughs> well. Me ma loves to complain. Right. That's what mums do. Yes. She loves to complain. And I'm like, I can keep saying, oh, me mum's so negative, me mum's so negative. Or oh, me mum's just being me mum. Yeah. I'm not, is she being negative or are my thoughts about my mum ne- my mom negative? She's just doing nothing. But you know what's interesting? Because I, I, you know, doing some therapy stuff and talking about different people and, 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 and men and women. Mm-hmm. Women actually, if if you hear a, a partner ever say, and I learned this, if you hear this, you never do this, you never do that, <laughs> you never take me out for dinner. How many lads with this? Yeah. Go, you never text me anymore, you never call me anymore, you never hug me anymore, you never love me anymore. We don't go out, we never do this. Yeah. Uh, what then? It's not what they're saying mm. because as a man, you hear that and practically go, hold on a minute, here's a fucking PDF of the number of times <laughs> you said I love you today. You disprove all that, but yeah. actually, it's what they're feeling, yeah. and the feeling is, oh, I feel I want some security, I want to feel loved, I want to feel prioritized, I want to be seen, I want to be yeah. heard. Yeah. Yeah. And interesting when you see negative, because I've accused partners and you know people being negative yeah. and women being negative, but it's not. It's like indirect language. Instead of saying "I miss you," "Show me you love me," yeah. they'll go, "You never do that." And when men yeah. just go, "Hold a minute, I fucking did do that," and it's really super weird. Well, mate, do you know what what I used to do was, and this is an amazing point you've made. What I used to do when I wanted that affection and extra love because I felt a little bit shit, is I just go on a bender, right? Turn my phone off. Oh, really? And make my wife worry about me for fucking three days at a time. And then when you came back. Yeah. And then when I came, so she'd come running after me. That's what men do. That's what so many men do that. They kind yeah. of they have a problem and instead of talking about it or asking for it, they kind of just run away and put on this whole show. Yeah. So they get, and this is why some people have a shit life. They feel like shit. They know what to do. They just don't do it because there is a secondary gain in staying the same. Yes. Like I've worked with, I've worked with thousands of people now. And I can give two people the same tools, basic shit, fill in this, answer these questions on a piece of paper. One of them does it, one of them d- doesn't. The only reason is because they there's more pain for them in doing the work than they, they're, they're, they're going to lose the gain that they get. Sympathy, empathy, extra love, extra attention. They don't even know that, though, because that depression and that anxiety becomes part of their identity. I think that's They don't amazing. know what to do without it. I, do you know what? I agree. And, and, and Chloe and I were talking about this. 
It's hot. It sounds harsh. No, no. I know lots of people who their identity is being depressed, is being anxious, is being fucked up. And if you had to change that, they lose all the sympathy, the emotion, their own identity. And they have no certainty. They have no certainty because being fucked up, there's a comfort in that yeah. because there's no expectation. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I know, you know, someone's close to me and I, it has this and they don't ever progress out of it through therapy for mm-hmm. everything, the hunger, mm-hmm. because because if they did... They'd have to fucking get a job. They'd have to change. They'd have to go through some hardship, and it's much more comfortable. Yeah, I think you step into uncertainty. They yeah. don't know. And that's at where... least they know how shit it is, yeah. right? At least they know what their life's like when they're not doing anything. But that that fear of the unknown is what keeps them there. It's that's all, and that took me a long time. It's actually why I ended up being a master coach because before that, I was just mentoring people and getting pissed off. So I was saying, do this, do this, do this. And then they wouldn't do it, and then they come back to me like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. And I had to figure that out because it was fucking exhausting. Because as a coach. Well, actually, I would say I was more of a mentor then. I take all these problems home with me, and I'd moan at my wife, "This fuck is not doing the work. Yeah. This bricks seeing this and seeing that." And then eventually, I had to figure out this human behavior thing. Yeah. And everything that we do is because we get something from it. Yeah. And why do I do that? Why you do it because you get something from it. You get a payoff. Well, I can't understand why I'm on this diet and I'm trying to get my shit together. But every Friday, I get I get on the booze and the gear. Mate, make you do it because all you can see is a payoff. Mm. All you can see is immediate upside. There's immediate upside and you can't see the negative consequences at that time when you're getting that pint or you're getting that booze in or you're eating that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I was interested because you've had a foreword from from a mutual friend of ours, yeah. James Smith, you yeah. know, who, who literally wrote this. I, I simply wouldn't be where I am today without Paul Mort, the original... And the best, and that's a foreword for your audio book, and, and obviously yeah. where we got connected, we're both at Harper Collins, and you've yeah. released a, an audio only. But what's the name of it, so people uh, can? Paul Mort will save your life. Paul Mort will save your life. Big claim. Okay, no, that I is didn't a big come claim. up with that, there, dude. <laughs> yeah, of course. I was did. like, really? Yeah, yeah. Thought, if you're going to give me the crown, I'll take Oi, it. I may <laughs> save your life. <laughs> um, you say in the in the in the book that you n- nearly got to that situation. Were you? Do you feel like you were actually going to do it? Were yeah, you like? Yeah. Do you know the biggest the, the biggest question I get asked is why the fuck was your wife there yes why did you take your wife with you and here's how volatile I was then she used to follow me almost every time I left the house so my son would be at school he was two three my daughter was a newborn she was born in Marbella and uh, every time I left the house she would shit her pants she would get really scared about what I was going to do. I was that volatile. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, well, give me an example of what would what would you have done that would freak out like just disappearing for three days disappear on the bender? for three days send a text saying I'm done turn my phone off yeah, have really? police, police, have, police would come out looking for me and that. Yeah, dude, when you're that low, you know, there's no logic. Yeah. All, all there is is emotion, no logic. My life was fucking amazing. Yeah. I was making all this money, didn't have to work that often. I've got two amazing kids, hot wife, I'm back in my hometown. What were you doing work-wise? I had a supplement company. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was at the marketing company. That's where I met Smith. I was teaching right. marketing and sales. Um, and yeah, it was... Um, it, it was I, I, do you know what? I keep thinking about it. I went to a cliff that probably wasn't even high enough. Oh, I lived really? directly so you opposite now. Up. Possibly just broke my legs, yeah. It's mad that in it. And my wife said to me, yes, I'll never forget this. She said to me what most mothers would say, which was think about the kids. And I was like, they'd be better off without me because I was fucking awful. Because that's what everyone thinks in yeah, suicide. Think People always think it's selfish, but you yeah. can't see past that. No, nah, you can't see past it. You're, like, you're in so much pain. It's almost like you're anxious and depressed at the same time. Do you reckon the gear... Fucked you up more than anything as well. A million percent. The Made you way the, more. One hundred percent. No fucking. Do you think about it? It's a stimulant. What yeah. goes up must come down, yes. right? Because it's like what, what people forget. We talked about some health and fitness guys that putting like uh, testosterone in your body. Yeah. And a lot of these kids see these people on Love Island and want these bodies, and they're firing all this testosterone, and it actually shrinks the nuts. Stop some, um, makes them infertile, but also turns the receptors off in the head. Yeah. So they don't find women fit anymore. Yeah. And they yeah. forget that as a sidetrack. And, and with gear, because you go so high, yeah. all the endorphins, all the stuff, when you come down, you fucking burnt your brain out. Yeah. Especially if you took like, MDMA and stuff. That can really yeah. fuck Huge you up. Well, that's what I was like. I remember coming back from Ibiza before, and I was, I've been crying on the plane the whole time. Yeah. But there's got to be a downside to it, right? Least, yeah. Anything that gives you that much of a high, there's got to be a come down. So should they, I was like, they'll be better off without me. And then she said this. And I don't know where it came from, from her, but the, the, the only reason why I'm here, I think, or oh, I'm not, got, just got two broken legs. <laughs> yeah. so, do you or, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that, that I'm not in a wheelchair or Because that's not quite the same story, isn't it? I survived yeah, exactly, and now I'm yeah. coaching. Yeah, but like, well, yeah. you sort of yeah. fucked it, Chief, because exactly. you know. Yeah. I did, I did. The bigger move is stopping before you throw yourself Absolutely, up, yeah. absolutely. She said to me, think about the kids then, growing up, as those kids whose dad killed himself. Yeah. And they'll have to take that, and I was like, they'll have to take that guilt with them for the rest of their lives, and I wasn't willing to do that. And then there was another moment about seven or eight days after the Christmas day. I'm on my own with the suicide watch team at my house. 
as soon as I'd watched him basically babysit you. My wife and kids couldn't be around me. And there was a woman there. I'll always remember her. She's called Donna. She's from Sunderland. In a rough area in Sunderland. Like, seriously, really rough. The, like, the seagulls have got fucking tattoos in that there. <laughs> Honestly, you, you, try, if you, you, you know what? You know in Trafalgar Square, you run at the pigeons. Yeah. The seagulls are like, fucking come on. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Fucking come on. Do you want me. one? Do you, yeah, want, you, you, want, you want some? Hand your pocket money and, around that fucking ice cream. And I, all I remember is that she used to just, she, she was the first person that ever gave me a bit of tough love. Everyone else was like, every time I saw a shrink, they'd molly coddle me and tell me that everything was okay and blow smoke on my ass. And she was like, Paul, get your fucking shit together. Pull, not even pull yourself together. She basically said to me, if you don't get your shit together, you're going to die. And that's what got me on uh, the first set of meds that I took. And then eventually I got off them because I felt like shit. Um, but she was the first person that sh she'd look at me and I saw her every week for ages and she wasn't even a shrink. She was just a community support, like, suicide watch person. Yeah. And she used to just... I remember she'd come in to my office. She'd come all the way to my office to see me on a Monday. She'd be like, you've been fucking boozing and sniffing this weekend, haven't you? I was like, yeah. And she used to look at me. You know the way your mum looks at you? Yeah. My mum had glasses. She used to look at me over the top of her glasses like that, the disappointed look. Yeah. And that was... That was the real first time that I'd experienced tough love, and then that led me on this fucking mad journey. What I'm interested in is, is uh, because... Look, I haven't had uh, hardships and stuff, but, you know, but people deal with different emotions. You know, I if I get uh, really angry, you know, it takes a lot to get me angry, but then I get, you know, over emotional. I'm a bit of a stormer offer. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't storm <laughs> off to fucking go and throw myself a brick. I yeah. do, you know, you get angry. But some people, especially, you know, you see with the rates of kind of self-harming young girls and people like that, you know, people lose control and want to exert control and they, yeah. they find it by doing something else because yes. they're so emotional. When you were younger, mm -hmm. if you got overall, did mm -hmm. you think, you know, where did the suicidal thoughts, were they just only... A, they only we... started coming up when I started boozing and sniffing. Right, really? Okay. Yeah, when I lost a, a bit of control of my life, when I stopped doing all the things that... Essentially, I built this life where I stopped doing all the things that I loved, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I wasn't you training. Because you wanted to get the, the, the trimmings, the cars, the, the house, yeah. the money. Yeah, and you, Okay. Yeah, and that's that, that was... When I was younger, none of that was prevalent. There's no history of it in my family. Um, and like I say, I suppose I was just the, the, the second thing that I said there, which I was lacking purpose. I built everything that I thought I wanted. And I was like, well, this is a bit shit. And I couldn't see what was next. So I just boozed and sniffed to feel something, feel that excitement of doing something else. And because um, you, when you're building a business like that, it's exciting. When you first start doing something, it's exciting. And then I got to this point where we were, we were, we built a big business. I mean, I made my first million in 2014. Fucking hell. My first million then. So it was. I'd done it all. That was all I ever wanted, and and it was like like I say, it, it didn't um, it didn't feel like I thought it would. And I think that's the same for a lot of people. Tyson Fury said the same. He won this world title, and he was like, "Is this?" He reached when he beat Klitschko. He's like, "Is this it?" Yeah, yeah. It's a sense of purpose that I think men at a certain point in their life lose. You think about it, you leave school, go to college, go to uni. I didn't do either of those <laughs> things. You got two GSEs, you can't do football. No. So you go to college, you go to uni, get a job, meet a woman, get married, have kids. What's next? Yeah. You, a lot of men get to that point and they're like, well, I've, the only sense of purpose is to make it a Friday so I can get on it. Yes. Only two weeks in Turkey. But actually, even I think with the people without the money, that is a lot of what society it does. It is. Society hates what they do, hate their jobs, more often than not, not, not in a very happy relationship yeah. because people aren't taught how to be happy. If yeah. the divorce rate is 50%, yeah. someone's telling me, then, you know, the other half can't have all got it right. So they must be in, in must, some of them, 10% probably fell into it. Yeah. The other fucking 40% are in hell. Just conditioned. Just conditioned, conditioned around. Yeah. That's why I think it's interesting when you see people win the lottery. Yeah. Is that when you take away the grind of life and they have all the money yeah. they then have to actually get to know their partner and they're like yeah. oh my god are you well, fucking happened, what I married to that did happen in lockdown yeah was, uh, I've never seen a meme that said I've just found out my wife doesn't work in Woolworths anymore <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing but I think that also I think the problem with his happiness thing is that people think it's some fucking unicorn land. Yeah. It's just a state and you can get it on demand. Yeah. You can get it on demand. That's what people are trying to replicate when they get pissed. Yeah. When they get on the gear they're trying to feel happy. Now I think the problem is that People think their life has to look a certain way before they give themselves permission to be happy. Yeah. Because that's all it is. You think it's a feeling like anything else. So you, you, you we can feel angry, but we can also feel happy yeah. on fucking demand. Yeah. And it's also how you, I think a lot of people, when they forget stuff and react, they, they forget what they themselves want to be. Yeah. So they choose anger in an explosive yeah. row when anger, they have got no idea that anger is the right emotion to feel for that situation. They over they overreact. Anger going, just comes from me, unmet expectations. Yeah, yeah. That's the only time I ever get angry when somebody doesn't meet my expectations. Yeah. Like usually I haven't even expressed my expectations. Yeah. It's just some unwritten rule in my head. You have met my expectations, therefore you must deal with it. But it's then, it's then people, get, but people choose that emotion. That's our first thing is anger. And it's like actually, 
if you could stay calm and then figure out what the mo- the best emotional reaction is to it, yeah. I know it's not easier, yeah. and also how you want to be. So if you are a nice, fundamentally nice person yeah. who talks about prioritising love yeah. and happiness, yet every time something goes wrong, you act like a fucking prick, yeah. you'll go in away from what you fundamentally yeah, 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 think yeah, yeah, you are, yeah. which yeah. I think is quite so interesting. So you don't meet your own expectations. Yes, that's yeah. what I mean, and that makes you just doubly worse. Yeah. And then funny though, James, anger can be very fucking useful. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you weren't playing rugby and you didn't get angry no. sometimes, you'd have been fucking crap. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. Like anger, anger changed my life. Yeah. I got pissed. I got sick of my own bullshit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If I wasn't angry, I'd be apathetic. And that's when I think people, that's when the real suicide happens. Not when yeah. they're angry, because that's an emotion. When they start to get apathetic and they're not saying anything. Yeah. When when, when someone tell I me, mean, I get messages two, three times a week, usually on a Sunday morning, mate, I'm not going to be here anymore. So I'm like, listen, you're going to have to go to the Samaritans. But actually, the good news is, if you're telling me that, you're probably not going to do it. Yeah, because if you don't say anything, you're going to do it. If you're just going to do it, you're going to do it. Yeah. People are going to take an overdose. It's a, it's don't a, it's a big shelf for health, isn't yes. it, when, when someone tells me. Um, so, yeah, it's a, um, I think that apathy is the, 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 the lowest place. Because when someone's pissed off, yeah, that's sometimes a good thing. I mean, b- being pissed off is is usually the start of someone's transformation. It's interesting you said about the change of your state. So my, my psychologist, one thing we worked about is if you imagine you're trying to play 30, 40 games a season and you are um, trying to emotionally get up for a game and say you've had an argument with your wife, you're not happy, you're injured, you're tired, yeah. whatever it might be. We worked on using music as a way to change state and oh, it does yeah, that dude. so important. So what dude. I would do is I would make a, a playlist that I'd refresh every month of like really emotive tracks. Because mm. we know, sun shining, you hear mm. music, you're like, I could take over the fucking world. Yeah. You know, yeah. windows down in the car, you're like, they can change you. Yeah. So I use music very much of changing a, changing a state. And what it taught me was the, the transitory nature of them being able to change to states like, anyway. Like instantly, you yeah. can change the way you're feeling at fucking heartbeat. Yeah. Someone it's told bad. me, someone told me, well, the therapist I was, I was talking to, God, Stephen Hedger is brilliant. He, he was talking about um, that, you know, in the middle of an argument, if you have a row with your partner, if you've early on, you can change to do a U turn or a left field turn with humour, yes. say something funny, and it completely, it, it, yes. you're suddenly like laughing. And my wife does yeah. that to me. Uh, if she catches me early, if she catches me early yeah. and it doesn't go on, because basically, like, if we're rowing and then half the thing you make a joke, you're like, you're a fucking prick. <laughs> but if you turn it, if you turn it early on yeah. and do it, I, I'll just, I can't yeah. help it, and that will change my mind. Do you know why it is? Really, the music's the same thing. It just changes where your attention is. It's like what I see these low moods or these disempowering feelings like is that just like the rumble strip on the motorway yeah. you know where you drift off and yeah. it lets you know yeah. it lets you know the, 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 the car's not fucking vibrating and that music's just a thing that'll bring you back on track same with questions yeah. I ask my guys I'm like listen what's one thing right now someone's struggling tell me one thing that you love about your life change the way they feel like that yes oh, the first will go oh nothing yeah. I mean well of course nothing but if you had to choose one thing yeah. if I had a gun to your head and I said choose one thing about your life that you love they're going to always come up with something. That can change the way they feel so fast. Same as, listen, tell me something that pisses you off. Guess what? You start talking about it, you get pissed off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mad. That just changes. And I love this scene, which is where attention goes, anti dieters. Yeah. <laughs> if you're asking off the top of my head, anti dieters. I tell you what, cheerleading, cheerleading fucking mediocrity. Yeah. That pisses me off. Yeah. Right, yeah. the the whole thing of going, you know, you're overweight, you're you or you're got an eating disorder, you are pathetic, lazy, you don't put any effort in your relationship, you yeah. don't change life, and all you do is fucking moan, and and people around you going, you you're okay, are you you're shamed? great? The, the shaming thing does my head yeah. in. I'm like, you can only make me feel shamed if I'm ashamed. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Anyone that talks about fat shaming, you think about it, no one ever talks about success shaming, no, right? No, no one ever talks about that. You can talk, people talk shit. Oh, Paul, all you ever do is tell us how well things are going yeah. for you. I'm like, well, if I wanted, if I felt ashamed, I could call that success yeah. shaming. Yeah, you should. Like, I, you can't shame me unless I feel ashamed. Yeah, but that's what I said. I did, <clears> I did a video and people were like, fat shame. I know, though. Shame is not a thing. Shame is a feeling yes. and only people can feel shit. You know, I can't. Choosing. Yeah. It's and a I, choice. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because we do actually in this country uh, particularly have tall poppy syndrome. That's why our media is such fuckheads because we want to cut people down because if people are miserable, then we, we, we either mollycoddle them and tell them it's okay to, because we're probably not getting on with it. Yeah. Or if they're really successful, we want to cut them down, chop their legs off and go, why are you so successful? Because mm. it then makes us reflect on the fact that we aren't doing everything we can do. Yeah. And as you're as you're right, and the thing about no one wants to take responsibility. No, but everybody's got the power to do it because nobody actually. Everyone, like I think the interesting point is that everyone has the power to do it, but because they don't have not have the answers or they're yeah. not prepared to look for the conversation, yeah. they don't do it. And it's do, a lot. Do you know? I think I'm, I mean I'm pointing the camera now. Like I'm on TV. But Good. It, it's easier to point the finger. Yeah. But every time you point a finger at something. Some some situation, some event, some circumstance, some person, you lose all of your power. Yes. 
Like, so you can't change anything. Judgmental. As soon as you do this, yeah, that's responsibility. Yeah. That's when I when I said reclaim my part. I actually wrote an email about it. I said, I, I sent you this. I said I sent James Haskell's people the bio about reclaiming your power. And I was actually, I have to explain what that means because I sound American as fuck. Yeah. I sound like I should be saying trash cans. Tim and, Robbins and uh, shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Without the religion. <laughs> That's it, man. I feel like I should be talking about trash cans and fucking, uh, what was my daughter called? Diapers and that, yeah, when I say yeah. that. But reclaiming your power is essentially stop blaming because then you're putting all the power in their hands, all the power in Boris Johnson's hands, all the power in COVID's hands, all the power in everybody else's hands. As soon as you say, listen, this is on me, yeah. the way that I feel is down to me, nobody else. Yeah. That's when you become really powerful. Like a lot of people will go, oh, well, that means it's my fault. I'm like, no, actually, if you think about it, it's exciting that. Yeah. Like I'm completely in charge of how I feel. Because only you can fix you. Me. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in complete control of how I feel. And we've already said you can change it like that yeah. in a fucking heartbeat. But people don't know how. What do you say to the people? Because when I put videos up about mindset, because this is what fascinates me, it's what helped me get to my career. And I think so many people, if I told you you could run faster, you'd buy these trainers. If I could take you, get change your body with the supplements, yeah. you'd take it. If I told you to eat calorie deficit, you'd fucking ignore me and don't do it because it, it can't be that simple. Mm -hmm. And if I told you that the power of your mind and developing your mind could fix everything, yeah. could change everything, but you have to talk to someone or or get the tools to do it and yeah. put some work in. You don't do it. Yeah. It's the one thing that's super neglected in, in sport. What do you ha when I do these videos, what do you say to the people who go, Well, it's all right for you. You're fucking middle class, you know, you haven't had any hardship. Yeah. Most people are struggling with mental health to pay bills. You'll yeah. never have to worry about that. As if people, you know, like I do podcasts, people go, When you get some real life guests on who have real life struggles, yeah. as if I don't have the same thing as other people. Yeah. That yeah. we that somehow people well, I don't get that, see, because I'm just a fucking dude from South Shields, yes. two years to see. So yeah. I think I think I actually have a little bit of advantage yeah. that because I'm like I'm just a fucking kid who was died. I was told I would be on bipolar meds for life. No. Yeah, I'm not. I'm interested that you um because what a lot of people do in your position, and I'm, I'm putting, maybe putting words in your mouth, but they yeah. go and do one course, yeah. right? And it's the same thing you read a book. You yeah. read a book on a subject, do a course. Yeah. That is the way. <laughs> That's your thing. So you read a book and you're like, intermittent fasting yeah. is the thing. Is right? the way. Right. Talking, fighting on beaches yeah. is the thing, yeah. right? And then, and then what you do is you hammer it to someone else. Yes. And then someone goes, Paul, actually, have you heard about the 5 2 diet? Have yeah. you heard about this meditation and yoga yeah. fixing you? Yeah. And then you get into that and it sparks your magic. And mm. then that becomes your thing. Mm. What I quite like about you is you fucking did everything. Yeah. <laughs> so you did everything. And then I assume, because that's what my question is, you, you cherry picked what you thought was the best out of each of these things yeah. and made your, your thing. And, and I suppose it's what's right for me right now. Like, I've got no doubt about it. It might change soon. Because, for example, if I train hard, I can't do it in the morning. Yeah. I'd love to, but then I'm fucked the rest of the day. Yeah. I'm 40 years old. Do you know what I mean? So if I train hard, it's got to be a nighttime. So in the morning, my, my routine is I'll, I'll have a sauna or I'll go for a walk. Best investment I've made in infrared sauna in the house. Wow, was that? I've heard they're good, aren't so, they? Yeah, yeah, amazing. So I do those things in the morning instead of training hard. In, in the future, that might change completely again. I might go from one meditation a day to two meditations a day because I know myself. So as we... As we expand, we everything can't stay the same. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you train the way you did when you were twenty, yeah. you'd be coming in a fucking wheelchair. Oh, well, if you see me walk, I basically am. <laughs> I look, I've got, it looks like I've got a stone in my shoe. I've just got no, I've got arthritis in my ankle, no ankle joint. Really? So, yeah. yeah, I like limp really leg. badly. I basically look like a wooden leg. So, but it's RPR. If I if I do the breathing and I get into a certain point in my stomach in my back. My knee goes over my ankle and I walk completely better. So I walk, Jesus. I walk, I walk, it's so, mate, it's the weirdest thing. It's based on kinesiology out of South Africa. Yeah. And um, a guy came to do it. They use it with the England rugby team. Yeah. And I got interested in doing it through another guy called Marco Finney, who's a, who's a brilliant uh, trainer that I'm training with at the moment. Mm -hmm. He introduced it to me and, and I did it. And the guy got in here, got in my back, and my knee to wall. So I, if I put my foot flat on the floor, how much my knee goes over my foot yes. on one is fucking, it's like nothing. Normally yeah. you'd be like that. Yeah. Mine's like that. Did it. Boom. And I have more movement in 10 years than I had after once, uh, after Jesus, 10 really? minutes. Yeah. So if I walk here in the morning and I haven't done it, yeah. I limp, I sit down, do it, it's like my ankle's fine again. Yeah. But it's only a, it's yeah. only a transitory period, yeah. but it's a very really interesting. Do you know what you're saying this? This is one of the reasons why people say, Paul, what's your morning rituals? What's your morning ritual? I mean, it doesn't matter because it might not work for you. Yes. So what I, when, I, when I get guys in, I'm like, you need to create a morning ritual around things that you value. Yeah. For example, I love cold baths. Some people hate them. Yeah. So why would you for why would the first thing you do in the morning be to force yourself to do something you hate? Do something you like doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? First thing in the morning. So I could say to you, do you know what? Jiu-jitsu will change your life. But you yeah. could go and hate it. Yeah. So I suppose that's what it is. I mean, so many people rely on motivation. And I say to them, listen, if you need motivation all the time, it means you fucking hate the thing. Stop trying to force yourself to do things you hate all of the time. Sure, sometimes you have to eat shit mm. and do things you don't like doing, but I'm not, I've already built a life where I do have to do things that I loathe all the time. You can't build a life you love doing shit that you loathe. 
That's what so many people do that. So if I constantly need motivation, it means that I'm trying to force... Some, so what? So I'm just like, well, change your strategy. Mm. You know what I mean? It's way easier. For, so right now, I can't train jiu-jitsu or box. Those are my two favourite things. So I'm having a fucking weight train. It's not for me. I don't, I don't enjoy it. So I've got to kind of force myself to do it. But it would be way easier for me to stay in shape if I could do the things that I love to do. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I got you. So it's yeah. like, I just don't force myself to do shit that's rank yeah. all of the time. Why would I? Yeah, you're When right. I can get the same result with something that I enjoy I'm doing. Ice baths. I hate ice baths. Yeah. I cut, like, so for example, my friend Dylan Hartley, um, he um, does ice, but he's got, he's got a fixed bath outside with ice cold water. It's got yeah. a hot bath. He does contrast. Yeah. Sits in there Man, I can do four minutes in one of them. Yeah. And then I'm in the hot water. I but just Jay don't Morton's do in the fucking wheelie bin. I know. I just can't, I just can't, man. I just can't yeah. live longer than that. I love it. And it's just, it's just not for me. Warm yeah. bath. Yeah. Sign me up for that. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. It's like, that's, that's, I suppose what I've done is I've taken the things that I value and, yeah. instead, and I don't say to people, you have to do it. This is the way. My way is just a way. Can you can you tell me just I mean and, and I know it's obviously much more extensive. Kind yeah. of almost maybe four points about what your way would be. You said the journaling. Journaling one hundred percent. Prompt the journaling, asking questions that steer your mind away from the rumble strip. Yeah. And onto a more empowering state of mind. Basically, on things that are going well, on things that are working, on things that you. I think the biggest problem of lockdown is that people are obsessed with what they can't do. All they're thinking about is what they can't do. It's, if I just thought about, oh, I can't train jiu-jitsu, I'd be fucked. I'm like, well, I can squat. I can deadlift. Yeah. It's not my favourite thing to do. I can walk. I'm doing that fucking Goggins thing this week, and you're the four by four. Shut up, are now, you? With 20 kilos on your back. So if I, because uh, I can't run anymore no, at no all. No training. Really? I'm not training for it. I'm just going to do it. I can't run anymore. Which, yeah. And I saw that four by four yeah. by four in it. it and I, and I, you know I said to Chloe, should I try and do that? She's like, babe, you can't walk. Yeah. And I, but the weird thing was, it's madness and it's, and it's utter insanity. And I can't yeah. understand why you'd ever do it, but it's still that attraction to go and do but it. It's cause... My friend that died, it's for him, and he would have been the first one to put his name down. Right. And he's got a, he had a false hip. Oh my God. <laughs> so I'm just, do you know what? I'm just going to do it because I know that I can, because I've done all, loads of shit like that before. But what I was saying was, these, these questions can steer you into things that you can do rather than worrying about what you can't do or how you don't want to feel. So journaling will be one, meditation will be one. There's so many. Benefits of meditation, I can't get started. I do it because it trains me to be able to kind of divert my attention again. You think yeah. about that. When you're anxious, you're in the future. Yeah. Y your mind's in the future. So meditation is a way to kind of... The, the way that I meditate is it just brings me back to one mantra or something. In fact, that new... Have you seen the new Netflix documentary by the guy from Headspace? No. It's fucking... It's like seven or eight episodes. The guy really who good. invented the app, Headspace. Yes. Yes. It's okay, really good. It, no. it tells his story and he describes meditation. It's a great, it's a great Netflix series, actually, for anybody that kind of doesn't get meditation because I think it gets a bad rap. Yeah. Or you have to empty your mind. Well, that's mm, impossible. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I'm on one of those fucking acupressure matches, you know, with the spikes. Yeah. I'm on one of them meditating. 15 minutes, done. Then I'm breathing. Hugely fill my body full of oxygen. I feel great. Um, Inside of that, I'm sweating, working out. Oh, listen, that's a... For me, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. The first thing the doctor will tell you to do is exercise. Yeah. However, you've just got to find a type of exercise that you li like to do. Yeah. Even if it's just fucking walking. Do you know what I mean? For me, it's fighting. For some people, it's lifting weights. For some people, it's fucking zumba. For some people, it's jumping around your fucking sitting room. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't fucking matter what it is. If you get in shape at the same time, great. But remember, we're doing this just for the endorphins. Mine was shagging, but I had to give that up when I got married. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, she, no, Jesus. A, she go mental because, you know, you're supposed to be shagging your wife. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I heard that wedding cake makes women allergic to sex. Really? <laughs> I've, I've heard that. I have heard that. Say yeah, I didn't know. No, my wife's, my wife's more, stu more hungry than I am. So that's why I'm going to say this now. We'll keep that last bit in. Chloe, I apologise. You want it more than I do. So I'm going to give her that rap because we talk about it on a couple's podcast. Mate, I'm going to throw one in here. Remember yeah. when I said, the the pod the sauna was the best yeah. investment I made. The best investment I made was in my wife's tits. Ah, uh, me honestly, the, the horny level went through the roof. Oh, really? The upgrade? Oh, mate, yes, went through the roof for me and her. It's right. amazing. Really? Yeah. Anywho, bolt ons. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> bolt on fun bags. Um, what, what? <laughs> I imagine you, you look at you know the, your clients and stuff and the people they surround themselves with, mm. like the relationship they have. have. Yeah, peer, uh, and how they are. Because I did a video the other day. 
And I firmly believe we've got ourselves into a situation now. We're so confused on so many levels, and there's so much dogma. My mm -hmm. way is the highway, mm -hmm. and that's why I love the fact that you've cherry picked yeah. uh, the best systems, which I yeah. think is always the best way to formulate what works for you, which you then feel you can share to others. Yeah. But it's we've now got professional cheerleaders cheerleading people being shit, people being subpar, yeah. and going. You know, people who are overweight, for example, and morbidly obese, we're putting them on magazine covers, and. What we're getting confused with is somebody being comfortable with themselves, which is really important in life. You know, it doesn't matter if you've fucking lost your way. If you're mm -hmm. kind of okay with it and you're not mm -hmm. trying to kill yourself off, mm -hmm. of, off a thing, mm -hmm. it's, it's okay, mm -hmm. but it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. But we've got people going, it's okay now. Yeah. What, do you, what do you say? Do you, would you warn people about cheerleaders, people that, that, that make their shit behaviour acceptable? I think with the guys that I work with, they kind of don't like themselves. Right. So they recognise shit behaviour. But the peer group thing, I think, is huge because I don't believe... Do you know that old thing, oh, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm fucked. <laughs> I spend my time with a fucking nine year, a 10 year old boy, seven year old girl, a fucking cat, <laughs> uh, a 23 year old cage fighter, and my wife. Right. I'm not the average. I mean, I might be. <laughs> well. But I also think that you, you, your peer group, and we, are, we all have different peer groups. And I'm not saying for a minute get rid of your friends, but if you put me in a room full of 10 losers, Chances I'm going to come out with the 11th loser. However mentally strong I am, however mentally flexible I am, however positive I am, that's going to rub off on me at some point. Um, so I think your, your, your peer group is critical. And I heard Robbins, I think, said, the results in your life are a correlation to the standards that your peer group holds you to. Yes. Because we're such conformists that we'll either lower our standards to fit in with a peer group or we'll raise them to fit in. Yeah. This is why I get it. This is why when I was name dropping before... That hasn't happened by accident. No. I don't know all of these people by accident. No. I know it because I went out my way to get to know them. I, yeah. know, I, I, I went to events, I, I spoke on the same stage as them. I got the same agent as them. I, I got the same publishing houses, the people yeah. that I wanted to be around. Um, but at the same time, I still got all my old friends. But if I just I had to mute that WhatsApp group. What do you think, what, what do you think <laughs> about the, um, the, the analogy, which I quite like? You are the standards, or the saying, yeah. you are the standards that you walk past. I think that for me, someone told me that, and that really, t and that might be seeing someone uh, acting in a certain way that you don't want. Because I think at the moment we just let shit slide all yeah. over the place. Yes. Like, even if you, you know, I've got it into my head so much. If I walk past litter, yeah. and I think, would I, you know, if that was me, would I litter? No, I pick it up. Yeah. If I walk past someone having an argument, so I'll be around and trying to, I would help. Yeah. Even like my wife, you know, she got in some fucking, I mean, shop at Waitrose, darling. Sorry about that. And there was <laughs> some, someone was kicking off and attacking the staff member. Yeah. And I was like, Chloe, you, you know, you got to be careful. And she and she stepped in and like basically diffused this argument. Oh, with mm. kindness, not with aggression, mm. and and I think walking past the standards, you, you know, you 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 accept, or, or you know, you are the standards that you walk past. Yeah, is, I think it's a really important thing. Do you do, you, do you agree with that? I've yeah. never actually you heard know that. Before. Yeah, the standards you walk past. Uh, yeah. So the standards you ignore. Yes. Yeah. So what I mean is, so you're, you're basically you are the standards you walk past. So if you were to if you were to see a couple, um, someone arguing and assaulting someone. Yeah. Most people's reaction is to oh, walk out in. and film it. I'll yeah, but most people don't. You know, yeah. if you were to see someone hungry or starving or, or helpless, Do you know or what, help. James? I think this is more of a. I'm not sure if it's. I think it's like a rules thing. Fine. Whatever your rules fine, are. Fine. Fine. You know what fine. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like more of a moral thing where fine. your moral compass is. Fine. Okay. Well, okay. you got to think also. Some people would shit themselves in that situation. Yes, yeah. Like someone might just not be brave enough to step in. Fine. I do, would that be the standards or would that be well, that? Or maybe I wonder, I maybe, he maybe even walks in, works in more of a team sport. I just think it's like, for example, I walk past an old woman trying to struggle down the stairs or a woman trying to carry bags. Yeah. I always ask them how to do it. Yeah. But, but a lot of people, you see people walking past, stepping out of the way. And I, yeah. and, for me, I want to be, if I want to be the kind of person I, my expectations that I live up to, I can't let that shit slide. Yeah. I can't just walk past shit. But, yeah. but, but do you we, think that's an automatic thing then or do you think it's a, it's a learned behaviour, no, or is it? Just, I think it's an unconscious thing. That I think it's an unconscious thing, but I also think it's a learned thing. Being in a team sport the whole time, yeah. Because that, you know, it's not just you. No, it's not just me. But I, I forcibly have to do it because I am so self interested, and I think successful people. I don't know. Would you describe yourself as a selfish person? I one hundred percent. Yeah. See, I so most successful people, and what I think we're talking about is if you work on yourself and you get yourself right. Mm -hmm. You'll be better for other people. A million percent. But what where people go wrong is they spend all the time focusing energy on fixing everyone fucking one else and don't do themselves. Men like, are made. Men are so bad at this. Really? Ah, oh, mate. The amount of men that meditate for two weeks and they're trying to force the missus to do it. I think women. The number one thing. One of the number one things I've learned about women, other than it's not about our orgasm, it's about theirs. Yes. That's the number one, number one thing I've learned. I, I feel sorry that you had to learn that. I was already. <laughs> I was already a black belt in that. I was. Mate, it's always, do you know what? It's always a, a you know, a till, two nil uh, victory for Chloe. So it's fine. <laughs> it's a two well, actually, nil. two nil. It's the three one normally. Yeah. 
I love it. I love it. So, so uh, the, one of the number one things that I've learned is they don't want you to, th when they're telling you about their day and they're ranting, they're not asking you to fix them. No, but that's the practicality thing. Do you yeah. know like, the guy I was talking to? It's downloading. Yeah. Sometimes they've got to download, and sometimes 99% of the said makes no sense. Like, if you listen to a conversation between men together, we are uh, one person speaking, we're listening. Women yeah. speak all at the same time. Yeah. In, in it, and nothing makes sense, but they're all listening and engaging, and they're yeah. like, and, then, and it's emotional. Yeah. When women sit down and talk, and you're like, "Hang on, nothing. I could fix this. Yeah. Uh, no, stop. It's hard. It's you just, but you've got to do it. Doing what I do. Yeah, you Especially can't. When I'm used to coaching people and mentoring people, I mean, listen. The, the reality is, I've been my wife for since I was 17. Right. I'm now 40. So you think I I got to know yeah. her by now, but but not. Um, that that's a big challenge for a lot of people is trying to fix everybody else. Yeah. But also, I think that. I also think that's selfish. Yeah. Here's why. I think everything that we do is self-serving. Everything. Everything that we do is because we there's a perceived payoff. So what I mean by that is if a guy is fixing everybody else and he's like, oh, I just do everything for everybody else. I'm like, that's because that makes you feel better. Get what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. It's still selfish. People pleases. It's yeah. still selfish. Yeah. So I think everything that we do is self-serving. People just like to pretend that it's so, not. So Chloe, so Chloe um, is a people pleaser. Yeah. But what we what we flagged up to us said you're doing these things because you derive happiness by helping other people. It's a huge women's thing, I think, and the mothering yeah. the mothering thing. But it's still a selfish act because it's the same way as you know if I post a picture of a topless photo of me online, mm -hmm. I'm, no one's going to benefit from that photo. A few people might like enjoy I mean, it. I'd argue with that. Well, fine, but, I, you know, you might, <laughs> but, but not to the not to the same extent that I'm getting from it from the narcissistic fact that I'm getting approval. Yeah. So it's a selfish act. Yes. Otherwise, why the fuck am I doing it? Because yeah. yeah, some people are going to enjoy it, but not to the same extent or or maybe equal to the fact that I'm getting some of... Because people go, fucking hell, mate, you're looking ripped. You're yeah. looking good. Yeah. That's why you're like... Well, what's the point in social media without that? Well, exactly. Someone called me egotistical. I'm like, from a following me on Instagram, I'm like, that's what your Instagram is. That's <laughs> yeah. all it is. Yeah. It's it's, a... That's all it is. I'm telling you about me. It's that's personal point... PR that you control. It is, in fact. Um, it is, uh... Just talk about that men's stuff. What would you say are the most... Co like, give me the, the three most common problems that men have that, you're f that you get. Overwhelmed. The overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Uh, they're exhausted. And I actually, I'm going to go on record as saying this. I, I think most people who are depressed are actually just fucked. What, what, what I was going to ask is, what are the most common excuses? Could you give me like the top three excuses you get that, that why people Ooh, are where they are? Well, it's, they're all a version of it's different for me. Oh, right. Okay, There's you wouldn't understand. Yeah, you wouldn't understand. You don't get it. My wife doesn't support me. My upbringing was this. this. It's all a version of everything happened to me. Right. Yeah. Oh, but, well, I could do it, but you just don't get it. You just don't get it. It's different for me. So it's I call that I'd call that the like victim level of awareness. Everything happens to me. The world's against me. Yeah. 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 And, and one thing that I've learned, mate. So that's that's ri literally the only one. Yeah. Everything happens to me. It's different for me. Fine. All of the different excuses are wrapped up inside of that. But the biggest change that I've had and the biggest realization I've had in the last year, this is going to sound so American. The th is third it, time I've heard American. Mate, yeah. seriously. What's mad is my dad's American. Mad. Really? I'm American, I. Um, is that I believe that everything happens for me. If I just have that belief, everything happens for me, no matter how bad, then that changes everything for me. I can't be a victim. I can't feel sorry for myself. I can't beat myself up because everyone says everything happens for a reason, right? I don't believe that. Nah, everything happens for me, for my growth. Hmm. If I choose to do. So when something happens, I'm like, what else could that mean? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my friend dying, I really struggled with. I'm like, what else could this mean? It's happened for a reason. He's been taking this. I'm like, actually, well, I'm going to spread his message. He's impacted so many people. I feel lucky to have met him. Made 700 people that had to shut the whole town down because they stood outside of his barber shop. A round of applause. Wow. Then this was only a few weeks ago. Like I, I was like, I was really upset, and I was like, actually, I feel privileged. Did, did, did he commit suicide or did he? No, he had a heart attack. Forty six. Yeah, forty six. Hanging around yeah. you too long. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So I, I was like, what else could this mean? Well, actually, it meant that I got to spend so much time with him. Other people didn't. Yeah. He would have been loving it, by the way. He'd have been in his cottage. You know, you know when rugby players clap the crowd. Yeah, back, yeah. He'd have been doing that. Really, in his that. Uh, cat, cat, Roll thank away. You, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. So. If I believe that, what else could they... Because you think about it, anything that happens, it's not about the thing that happens, it's about what I make it mean. It's about the meaning that I attach to it. It's about the, the my imagination making it mean something else. So, for example, COVID, some people reacted one way, some people reacted the other way, and it wasn't the circumstance. It was how they viewed it, what fucking filter they had on. Yeah. That, that's the whole thing. So, yeah, the, the biggest excuse that I get from people is just some variation of it's different for me. My wife this, my ex... Exes have normally got something to do with it. Yeah. Um, jobs and bosses have normally got something to yeah. do with it. And right now it's 
COVID destroyed my business. Yeah. Mate, you're a fucking PT. Yeah. My my friend that died, right, check this out. This is how mint he was. He passed away and last May, his barbershop shut down. He was teaching people people's wives how to cut their hair on Zoom. That's incredible. Worry about what you can control. My MMA my- club, he was teaching sessions on Zoom. I was rolling around the fucking floor with an empty with a tracksuit filled with old clothes, learning on bars. I love that. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. anyone can it's just the it's how they view the situation. Yeah. It's this is an opportunity. It's the optics or, they call it, like a filter, or whatever you say. That's yeah, exactly yeah. what it's like an Instagram filter. Yeah, like the school runs. My favorite example of the filter. You, if you ever do a school run, you'll see the difference between Instagram and real life. Right. Holy shit! <clears throat> Unbelievable. But yeah, I think that's the. Uh, I think that's a lot of people's biggest challenge is just that their imagination runs wild with them. They yeah. make something happens and they make it mean one thing, and that's the only thing. It they all think mean. they're in their own like mini Truman show. Yeah, where that's it's the, like yeah. that's the truth. Really? You know when people say, well, that's not the truth, or this is the truth, I'm like, no, that's your truth. Yes. It's not my truth. But it's, but it's also their truth based on their context of what they see through their eyes. And that's why well, I said, you know, we're on, especially on social media in life, context is all lost. You know, just you, you viewed COVID different from my experience of COVID, yeah. your upbringing is different from my upbringing, yeah. and yet we're trying to find a common ground and yeah, both yeah, yeah, trying yeah, to agree yeah. with something. Yeah. And that's what I find astounding. Yeah, and, 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 uh, I, I, for example, I put, I put an email out the other day, and it was a, it was a little bit naughty. That's where Smith learned email from. Right. Uh, it's a little bit naughty. And someone came at me and she said, so what you're basically saying is man up. I'm like, no, I'm not basically. I haven't wrote that. She says, no, but in a nutshell, that's what you're saying. I'm like, not in a nutshell. Read it. I've never said those words. Yeah. I haven't typed those words. She was just, her meaning was, he's saying man up. Yeah. But the words weren't even in there. No, no. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's interpretation. Yeah. But people interpretation it by their life experiences. And that's why we and that's why we always try another to... Another thing that you can change in an instant, though, by yeah. asking the question, what else could this mean? Yes. And yeah. I think also, the biggest thing that impacts perception as well is where you're at with your state. Yeah. Like, where you're at with your energy. Yeah, my life yeah. could... My life yeah. could... If I, wait, if I get no sleep the night, my life could be exactly the same, facts. Yeah. But my feelings about it could could be completely different. Yeah. All that's happened is I've had no sleep. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> you know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. So the only yeah. difference is that my state or my energy yeah. or where I'm at is lower than higher. Well, you, said it was about, you said about your work. Your friend yeah. your friend died yeah. and you thought you attributed your work because that suited your narrative. That's it. Yeah. yeah. My brain trying to justify my emotional state. Yeah. So it's, it's a, for, for me, that's one of the number one things that people need to look at is just ask the question, what else could this mean? I've lost my job. Fuck, I've lost my job. Fuck, I've lost my job. Yeah. I've been set free. How how can I do more? What can I do differently yeah. now? What else could it mean? Yeah. Could I set my, my own business? Never been a better time. Yeah. I've always wanted to do that. Now, now I've got no excuses. It's uh, hard, But isn't I can't it? because I've got any money. No, no, you, this is your time to do it. And all the difference is, is this, right? Literally turning your head. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> turning your head. It's like, it's like uh, having a torch on your head and shining the torch on one thing versus the other thing. Completely change how you feel about yeah. the situation. No, mate, it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm, I've got a couple. We've been talking for quite a long time. I knew we would do because I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, mate. I've got a couple of um, couple of last sort of questions. Do you think you, you could? I mean, I'll, I'll say it first as a statement, really, and then, then a question. Mm-hmm. Do you think you can help everyone? I don't think you can. Or I don't think not you personally, but I don't yeah. think people can because some people have done all they're going to ever do and have such a closed mind they can't ever fix it. It's themselves. a great question. I, I think I've got to say, first of all, we're, we're really, I know that I have no right to help anybody. Right. All I can do is extend an invitation. And the best way to do that is through example. I think that's why what I do has worked so well and we've been able to impact so many people. And I got the Master Coach of the Year thing and got the book deal is because I walked the talk. I've been through that whole thing. I think a lot of people who try and do what I do, they haven't experienced much. They haven't had many challenges. They've just got a fucking certificate. Do you know what I'm saying? They don't work. Personal development's got a 95% failure rate. The number one reason is because the coach doesn't work on themselves. So I want that talk. So so I think that we can extend an invitation through example, and it's up to them what to do with it. Do you know what I mean? If yes. someone's willing to, if someone's willing, I can help them. If they're not willing, I can't. But that's what I mean, because I just think some people, from all the stuff we've talked about, essentially the victim mentality, their identity rather stay the is being evicted, they'd rather stay the same. And 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 they, you know, there's a great guy called Les Brown who talks about um, stuff. Yeah, and usually he's, he's, great. he's great. great. And he's like, some people, he says, is that some people have done all, all they're ever going to do. Mm-hmm. They're born, they get married, they get a job, then they die. Mm-hmm. And people are like, no, there's much more to life than that. And I, I don't agree. You see it all the time. Some people have achieved all they're ever going to achieve because mm-hmm. they just don't have the ability to mm-hmm. fix it. And mm-hmm. yes, we don't have the answer. So you find people like yourself, you find I think people... Really, yeah. really sometimes I think, right, I think mindset, my interpretation of mindset that is, makes the most sense to me, I think mindset is often referred to as how resilient you are, how tough you are. I don't think it's just that. My definition of it that I talk about in my book is mindset is a set of beliefs and assumptions that are so powerful 
and you own them that your behavior conforms to them. Yeah. So I'm like, actually, I can change my mindset, but it's a skill set. Like, I can start to look at my beliefs and I can start to think, what does that mean? I can change my assumptions. Assumptions are the fucking killer of dreams. People are going to say this. People are going to do that. People are going to criticize me. People are going to do this. I need more self-belief. That's an assumption. You don't need self-belief sometimes. I bet you've done plenty of things in your life that at one point you didn't think you could do. All the time. You did it without self-belief. Yeah. You did it with self-doubt. People are waiting for that shit to disappear. You know what I mean? They're waiting for that to disappear. They're waiting for self-belief to show up. They're waiting. They think that you have confidence. So yeah, I think that that it's a skill set. And sometimes the fear is far worse than reality in your mind. Like if you think about what's the worst thing that happened, like, punching the face is a great example. I was talking to Caitlin, Caitlin Jenner, and I did. I'm a celebrity, and she said that the reason she struggled so long for so long to transition into a woman. Mm-hmm was because she thought no one would accept her. And yeah. I said, well, what happened when you did? She said, well, everyone was great about it. Yes, there was naysayers, but yeah. more people were great and understanding than ever. Yeah. And, and she's like, I wish I'd done it earlier. And there's yes. so many people not taking action because the fear of what they think is going to happen versus what actually is... Yeah. is it's stupid. usually the fear of what they think people are going how people are going to react. Yeah. Fuck people, I yeah. you know. Yeah. Especially now... You know about getting punched in the face. Mate, Thinking about it's worse than it actually happened. Oh, of it's not that bad. Mate, I've cornered. I must have cornered about 40 white-collar fighters, right? The first fight. And... 50% of them try and quit on the stool in the first round. Paul, really? I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I haven't trained hard enough. I can't do it. So I don't even get to coach them. I just have to keep them in. Really? <laughs> and the thing that they say is I just can't do it. I'm like, mate, the worst thing that's going to happen, you've got fucking pillows for gloves for a start. You've got a head guard on. The worst thing that's going to happen is you bust your nose. Yeah. Guess what? Your nose is fucking bleeding, mate. Yeah. And then they're all right. But the, the thought about it's way worse than it actually happening. And I think that a great analogy for this about... We're not scared of failure. We're scared of looking like a failure. Yeah. Right? And I think that it's because we make ourselves the star of everybody else's movie in the head. So right now, uh, when people say, Paul, I'm just scared about what people think. I'm worried about what people think. It's easy to say, don't care about what people think. But you kind of, you can't, we're kind of wired to, right? It's kind of a, a human instinct that not want to get kicked out of the village or the tribe. And I'm like, right now, somebody in the world is worried about what I think. They're not doing because they're worried about what I think. Someone. I'm not even thinking about them. Are you? Someone in your world, in your network, you're in their head when they're worried about doing something that they want to do because they think, well, what will James think? You're not no. thinking about them right now, are no. you? No. You're not. So that's... And the analogy that I've got is I'm the star of my movie. I have some people that are supporting cast, my wife and kids. Some people like you today, you're an extra on my movie. I'm an extra on your movie. But then tomorrow... I'm not any movie at I'm all. I'm not paying you. You're... <laughs> Neither are fucking Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. Not anymore. Grenade, actually. Grenade. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, it, I'm not this. I'm not going to be this in your movie at all tomorrow. Not even right. an extra. So if you think about it like that, it's like, well, actually, you're not in that person's head at all. So y- 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 you're worried about what they think. The reality yeah. is they're not thinking about you. Yeah. They don't give enough of a fuck. Unfortunately, yeah. that's what I said to. I, I've had this conversation with my wife and other people. And I said, "You're f- worrying about these these people. They're not even like you said. We said they're I'm not thinking, thinking about, about you. And I said, "What? Well, we've won because in your spare time, you're thinking about what they're thinking about you. And it's like they're getting on with it. They're by not the time, about you. by the time you fucking you know you you you, you, you know you're sitting there and got over it, they've left the house and done whatever they're going to do. <laughs> yeah. so it doesn't matter. Me, these people that have told me to jump off a cliff by an hour later they forgot that they fucking wrote it yeah, yeah yeah. like even 10 minutes later they've said you should have fucking jumped mate I'll reply and some people even be like I can't even remember writing that yeah so pe- that. not enough people I think people don't give enough of a fuck about us to even give us an opinion 99.9% of the world we just focus on the ones that are so I think that there's so many people who aren't living their dreams because they're worried about what people think but they're not thinking about you and it's easy for us to say oh just don't give a fuck what people think we do yeah of course but but when you realise that they're not thinking about you at all. I don't believe, you know, people say, oh, I just don't give a shit. What people, everybody cares about everybody. Mate, the people that, that say that the loudest yes. care the most. Yes, of course. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't say it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you're too busy doing to be worrying. Yeah. yeah I, I agree. don't give a fuck what people think. Well, why are you telling me? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like you're trying to remind yourself that yeah, you Yeah, just me then. Just, yeah. You just care about what I think then. Um, yeah. Me, did I even answer that question? I don't. You did. I no, did. you did. You did. You did. You did. You did. I mean, like, I was going to ask you about your transformation stories, but I think people should buy the, the, the obviously buy your book. Yeah, to, dude, it's full of them. To look it's at it, because I know them, you've, yeah. you've changed the names in them, but uh, there are some amazing stories in there. Yeah. Um, I, I want to challenge you on my sort of last question. So, you know, I, I, I don't know because I'm not in your head, but do you mm. still, if you've been in that state? Uh, where you were, you, I don't believe really you believe you fully eradicate yeah. that. You have to constantly no. work on that. No. How, it's how like being you, fat. Do you, yeah, yeah. you still have de- you still have demons? Do you have dark moments ever still? Only when I stopped doing the things that got me better. Fine. 
So it's like someone gets in shape and then they stop doing it and they go back eating shit and not working out. They get fat again. It's the same for your mind. The worst part is when you say you gain weight, you usually get fatter. Yeah. It's the same for your brain. You get worse because you know better now. Yeah. You know, you know better. You know you can do better. So I got asked... I can't remember who it was by. He was on a podcast. It was or, or it was with Harper Collins. They said to me, do you think you'd ever end up back there? I said, yeah. I could easily end up back there, probably within the space of a couple of months. Right. If I do what got me there, because what got me there was a result of repetitive behaviours. Not by accident. I didn't catch it. It was not contagious. It's not in my family. No. I created the whole thing through my repetitive behaviours. So if I stop the repetitive behaviours I've got now, my good habits, and went back to the bad ones, fucking right, I'd end up back there. Here's a little tale for you. Do you know what an anal fissure is? Yes. Have you ever had one? No. Bro, I had one in 2018. They never go, do they? Horrific. They, yeah. Botox in my arse. Right, that's Amazing. what they did. Botox in your okay. arsehole. I can't pout or anything like that, so don't ask. <laughs> 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 For a great Instagram photo. Anyway, I did that. And this week, the, well, the surgeon said to me, he said, Paul, listen, you can only have this once if you don't hydrate, if you don't eat healthy, and if you don't take these stool softeners, yeah, right, yeah. you will, it'll come back. This last week or so, it started hurting again. Because guess what I stopped doing? Taking the tablets and hydrating properly. Fine. Crazy that, Yeah. It? But do you, do you ever feel... Um, I, I mean, I, from what I've seen now and how vocal you've been in the podcast, yeah. th- some of the coaches online mm-hmm. uh, and some people we know and some people, you know, and, and you see, they advocate this all this stuff and they tell people and you know... I know you said the biggest failure yeah. that, that, that they don't work on themselves. Yes. And you know people are offering advice to people and being a a figurehead when their shit is in order. Yeah. Are you vocal about the stuff and say, listen, guys, I'm time. giving you advice. I'm, here's my invitation, as you said. Yeah. But actually, I'm having a shitter. This yeah. is it. I've gone away from these things. We're, yeah. all, we're constantly doing it. Because I think yeah. where people go wrong is they pretend their shit doesn't stink. Do you know, I did a video this morning called uh, The Curious Tale of the Sore Bottom. Okay. I tried to put arsehole in and Facebook wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> Curious Case of the Sore Arsehole. Yeah. They're I like, we can't upload your video. Um, anyway, so I did one on that this morning when my friend died. I said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling with this. Here's how I'm dealing with it. Fine. So I'll, I I think it's important for me to not just share the highlight reel. Fine. I share the whole Because a lot of people do. And that's why we've, we're, we're in a lot of shit, is that people think, that, that, like you said, Instagram versus reality, they don't show the reality. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, I think it would be out of people. I hate this word. But people talk about authenticity. Yeah. Yeah, they're talking complete shit. I know this, mate. I've spoken in events where someone's bragging about they're doing seven figures online. I'm speaking on the same stage as them. They're asking someone to share a fucking room with them. It's the same. It's the same everywhere. Like a fucking lion on the internet, but in real life, they're a mouse. You'll have seen it. You you see what fighters all the time as well. Yeah. Um, But it's like, yeah, I think it's a... I don't know if it's a problem. I, do you know what I hate? This word toxic as well. I fucking hate it. <laughs> this toxic positivity and this toxic masculinity. I mean, who decides that? Who decides whether that's toxic or not? My other favourite, imposter syndrome. Oh, Fuck right. off, man. Do you mean you're uncomfortable? Yeah. Who invent- How dramatic does it sound? You, mean, you actually mean you've got some self-doubt, you mean? You're, unco- your yeah, you're just uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. You're just uncomfortable. I did an article for the Metro newspaper and they're like, oh, Paul, that's amazing. I'm like, someone made that up Yeah. as though it's a fucking contagious disease. Imposter syndrome. Sounds like you get like your knob falls off and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're <laughs> something, yeah. terrible. Yeah. You're just uncomfortable and you're looking to put a label on the yeah. discomfort, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you, you know that, uh, what I was going to interrupt you about earlier was, yeah. so I did, it was interesting about the depression. Chloe yeah. was telling me she read a study that only 10% of people who feel depressed have the chemical imbalance in their brain to qualify to be depressed. The rest of people are just having like a change Fucking of state. Exhausted. It's, exactly exhausted. Like exhausted. You said. That's a very, it's an yeah. amazing fact. Yeah. 10%. So how many people do you know who say they're depressed? If you went and tested them, only 10% have the chemical imbalance to be fucking depressed. Well, think about this as well. How do you think the chemical imbalance happens? By accident? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. What do you think might create it? Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. chemicals that you keep putting up your nose? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I say. I'm like, if I... Because, so, when I got diagnosed bipolar, I was like, I'm not taking meds, I'm not taking meds. They put me on lithium. Fuck me. I went from feeling great and... Fe- so, I basically... This was my opinion on what bipolar was. I chase an adrenaline buzz. And then when that adrenaline goes up, it comes down, right? When I start to get a handle on that adrenaline thing, funny enough, bipolar went away. I stopped taking lithium. I had to get my bloods taken every week for six months because it's that toxic. It's that bad for your liver. If you just stop taking it, you die. That's how mental it is. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying by the way, I'm not saying come off your meds. I would never tell anyone to do that. Even though I've helped hundreds of people do it, I've never advised them to do it. I had a partner once who took because because the, the relationship was going well. Yeah. Um, who was loving life came off the meds, and I and I watched it happen. And I was like, what? Oh, and I was like, you do 
Like, yeah. you, you, you can't do, do that. Just yeah, you're no. feeling great in one state nah. and it just crashed. Yeah. It was like ridiculous. Yeah. But you start to learn to manage that, that chemical imbalance in your brain. Like that chemical imbalance doesn't happen by mistake. You affect that through your palate. Mm. The whole palate thing I was talking about, that can massively impact the, the chemicals in your brain, hugely. But no one wants to talk about it. <laughs> Mate, well, listen, I've loved this. What, you, what's, what's next for you? Um, where do you want to be in the kind of next couple of years? Where, where do you I see want to get there? a paperback deal. Right. Ha so if Harper's listening, we'll do the paperback deal soon. Because you know why I wanted the paperback deal? Because all of my friends are on the shelves. Smith, Ollie Ollerton, yeah. Jay Morton. James Haskell. Haskell's on the shelves. Sunday Times bestseller. Tyson's obviously yeah. me mate now. Yeah, obviously. Obviously me mate. Yeah. My kids are like, Dad, when are you going to be on the shelves? Yeah. So anyway, if well, I'll... Ollie, our publisher, because I've got, a, I'm actually doing, because again, I'm not, I'm being through your situation, but a lot of stuff through sport and through life is mm -hmm. mindset, and I'm doing a. Mm -hmm. Got another book. And I'm doing a mindset book, and he yeah. was saying, actually, you know, when we talked about you coming to the podcast, yeah. Paul Mort's done this audio book thing. And I was like, no thanks. And he's like, that, 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 that is great. I was like, it's amazing. Yeah. But I was like, no, I like physical as well as I've read yeah. my audio book. Like you, like we I talked about. Can you take what I was given, really? Yeah. Because yeah. I said my agent was like, I was like, listen, I'm a bit of a risk for them. Yes. I've got twenty five thousand fucking followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a bit of a risk. I'm not a name. That it's yeah. he, they know that when they give it to somebody who's an I don't. I hate this word. I'm not even going to say it. A celebrity yes. like, or who's got a following. Yeah. They know that there's some guaranteed sales. You'd hope they so. They had no yeah. guaranteed sales of me. That's no. why I had to get Smith in to do no. the forward. Yeah. But you've killed. But you've killed it. And I think you know. And like I said, if, if anything is to go by today, you know, you've inspired me. I mean, where can people find the book? Uh, Audible. Audible. Apple, Audible. Apple Books. Apple Books. Uh, mate, it went to number four on Apple Books. <laughs> Sorry about that. Above Middleton. Above Jay Shetty. Above all those fucking. I had Barack Obama, Matthew McConaughey. And some other guy I've never heard of in front of me. I was I love that. buzzing. I love buzzing, that, mate. Yeah. Well done. That's congratulations. Thank you, mate. So I appreciate it. Where can people find you on Instagram if they want to follow you? Uh, Instagram at uh, Paul Mort One. I'm terrible at it. Fine. I'm terrible at Instagram. Fine. Um, and Do you have a YouTube or Facebook? I have a Facebook. You can find my podcast, Paul Mort Talk Shit, where I've had uh, Tyson Fury, Chris Ramsey, uh, Ollie Ollerton, Jay Morton, James Haskell, yeah, I'll uh, be in. Smith, all of those guys. On and you can find uh, actually just just get the fucking book. Fine, get yeah. the book. And listen, uh, Harper Collins, we love you. Make sure you get him a paperback <laughs> book because the guy's a, a legend. Paul Mort, thank you so thank much. You, mate. I appreciate it. I've been James Haskell. You've been listening to What a Flanker, the podcast series too. We've got so many more guests to come. If you like my book, What a Flanker, please pick it up in paperback now. Subscribe to the podcast, share it. Remember, we're a YouTube show as well, and you can find us on all your regular digestive channels. 